Hey everyone, welcome to 630 again. Peter Callrider here. Now we're going to install the fenders on your around the block. Okay, so we're going to install the fenders for your around the block. You just ordered your fenders and you want to put them together. Listen, you can do this. I know you can. You got really got to believe in yourself. It's not hard. There are a few little tricks to it. Um, you could probably do it without this video. Uh, some folks do have, are not familiar with it and need a little extra help. But even if you've never done this before, I want you to believe in yourself. I always try to convey that in my videos that you can absolutely do these things that you haven't done before. You can also go to a bike shop and uh, pay someone to do it for you if you wanted. I don't think it's really necessary, but you can do that. So let's get into it. Okay, so what you got, I've got a contrasting color here because obviously I have a mint green around the block and I have matte gray fenders here in uh, plastic as they will arrive for you. I also have struts. Now, these struts or stays, whatever you like to call them, uh, these hold the fender obviously to the bike. These are silver, okay? Uh, you're gonna receive black ones, but uh, we're gonna use silver today just, just to let you know you're gonna get black ones. And then in a separate package, you will also get your hardware. Uh, this is silver as well. And this will have all the uh, nuts and bolts that you need, okay? So let's just get to it. I'm gonna dump all these out. There we go. Where am I gonna put this package? My back pocket, this back pocket. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and unwrap the fenders. We've got two of them. This bigger one here is the rear one. There you go. The matte gray, it's kind of a cool color actually. I hope the camera's picking that up all right. And then this I'm gonna throw over here. Okay, cool. So the first thing we want to do is attach the stays or struts to the fenders. All righty. So we've got these little guys here. It comes with a bolt, a nut, and two washers. We'll have one washer Go on the outside part of the fender, and then the opening on the fender right here. And then the second washer and the nut. Oh yes, I forgot to tell you the tools you need. You need a Phillips, you need a four, five, and six millimeter Allen wrenches, Allen keys, and then some sort of uh, socket or wrench or even a, uh, an adjustable crescent wrench to hold the nuts here, okay? So I have the luxury of having a socket here. It's gonna be the uh, eight millimeter, I believe. Yeah, the eight millimeter. And then on the other side is your Phillips. I'm just gonna tighten that down just like that. You don't need to crank it too hard, but you do want to make it pretty firm. Okay, so there we go. We got the strut on there. Then what we have here is the longer bolt. We have two bolts that uh, are longer than the others. One is uh, about twice as long as the medium one. I'm gonna go ahead and take the nut and the um, washers off. You know, if you get any of these washers in different order, it's not the end of the world, it'll all work. Um, they do have a certain order, but it's not, <laughs> it's honestly not that important. So here we go. Now there's a tab here to attach the front fender. That's going to slip right in behind the tire here, the wheel. And then we're going to stick the bolt in with a washer on it, right through the front. The fork, which has a hole in it for this purpose. A lot of times the uh, reflectors are attached here. We have them on the handlebars now though, mostly. <clears throat> Let's see. A little, uh, little narrow, I can get through by. So then there is a thicker washer, 
which has a little curve. The curve is going to go on the back of the fork. And then we'll stick the fender on with the fender tab. And then the second thin washer. And then the nut. So, and then you can tighten that up with a 10 millimeter wrench and screwdriver. So. There we go, that got, we got that tightened down. And now all we have to do is attach the struts to the eyelets here on the dropouts. Easy peasy. We have a few sizes of bolts here. This one's gonna be the, large, uh, the larger diameter one. It's called an M6 because it's six millimeter, sorry. It's, uh, it is an M6, but a five millimeter uh, wrench fits into it. And first up through the strut, and then just screw it into the frame. Be very careful that you get the threads engaged properly. You really don't want to strip any of this um, because, you know, it will be a hassle to get it, get it fixed again. Um, but generally the threads, if you do cross thread or something, generally the threads on the bolt will strip instead of the frame. If you strip the frame, then you will have to probably get into a bike shop and get new threads put. Not fun. So anyway, just be very, very gentle and careful as you thread these fasteners. That's probably good advice for any assembly of any product. And, uh, and then when you get to the end, <clears throat> these are kind of small bolts here. Uh, if you really wanted to, a person of a certain strength can, could break the head off of that. Um, and then you'd be really in trouble. So when I'm tightening it down, I just get it to where it's firm. It's a gentle little pressure for another just tiny little, not even eighth of a turn maybe. Just enough to secure it. It really doesn't have to, you don't have to give it all your strength and please don't because you could, you could pop the head off of that bolt there. It's pretty small and, uh, and can be delicate. So uh, sometimes we see, you know, guys that crank it all the way down and boop, pops it off and uh, that's a really aggravating situation. This out. The fender's done, but what we want to do is make sure that it's nicely centered and everything. So I'm going to lift the front up here, and I'm um, <clears throat> the brakes here are a little tight actually. I'm just going to loosen those completely so they're not affecting us. But so you want to see if the wheel can move freely of the fender. Usually it does. However, fenders are you know they're kind of wiggly and wobbly, and so if you need to, you can actually pull up on the fender a little bit like that. You can adjust it with this slot here. You can um, squeeze the fenders a little bit. If it's not centered back here, don't worry about that. You can kind of push it this way or that way. You know, there's a, a few things you can do. It's just attached with this little strut here. It's not a big deal if you need to do a little pulling or whatever to um, get it centered there. So anyway, I think they look good, but just showing you what you can do if your result isn't quite how you like it, not a big deal. Those brakes need to be adjusted tight. Anyway, here's your front fender. Let's do the rear fender. It's gonna be really the same operation almost, but there are a few little things, and there's one particularly, uh, one part that's a little bit difficult. I'll show you the, the hack for doing it, okay? So first thing we'll do is go ahead and put the struts stays back on. Same exact process. We'll get the really small bolts with the Phillips head. Put that in there with its washer, throw the strut in. You know, three hands might be handy in this operation. If you got a friend, I don't know, I've done this a million times, but it always seems a little awkward. There we go, get that puppy attached right there. And then my screwdriver and my eight millimeter socket, or like I said, any, any, um, any adjustable wrench will do. You know, a table's nice too, actually, that helps. So, tighten that on down. You can see here I've got a little crooked, no problem. Straighten it back up, yeah? Okay, fenders aren't a big deal, guys. Easy peasy, nothing to stress about. 
If you break it, just let us know. We'll send you a new one. But you're not going to. You're going to be fine. I think that if, uh, if you are intimidated by this, you can take it as a little bit of an adventure, a little bit of a challenge. Try it out. You know, if you end up getting a little frustrated, certainly give us a call. We'll help you out, get you through it, maybe. Maybe this video will help you. But uh, if it is the case that it's a little tough for you, it's quite gratifying once you do get it done and realize you can do these things. Okay, so now we're going to take the little uh, medium length bolt here. And I'm going to take the fender and I'm going to slide it in from the back. And then that tab is going to go all the way here to, there's a cross piece here between the chain stays, which is just a part of the frame. And you'll see a hole there. And that is for these fast bolt. So we've got the bolt, we've got a washer, and we're gonna stick it through the fender tab and then through the frame. Oh, sorry. I skipped a step. We've got that, that thicker washer with the curved side, we can put that in too. Again, like I said, uh, you know, we're not launching this bike off the moon, so if you get some washers, uh, put in the wrong spot. It's not going to really, it's not going to really matter, actually. Ha! If you think it does matter, you can tell me in the comments below. Maybe you know, maybe you know something I don't know. But, uh, I don't think it's going you know, to make the world worse. Washers in the wrong spot. I think that's one thing, too, is not to take your notes too seriously. Because when you find something that you haven't and may seem a little out of your whoop, out of your normal experience. Don't take it too seriously. Just work on it, and uh, we'll get. You know what? I kind of missed the. I missed the order of operations here, guys. We got to do the tricky part first. Sorry about that. That's live, live television, anything can happen. So I'm gonna take the really tiny little screw and a washer, and there's a slot here at the very bottom of the fender, okay? And it has to attach to a little tab that's down here behind uh, the large chain ring, okay? So this is the hard one to get to because it is actually kind of uh, blocked by the tire or the wheel. You can certainly take the wheel off. Um, if you do that, it's not hard to take the wheel off, especially with a seven speed, it just drops right out. Um, and then it'll make this operation extremely simple. But there's a little bit of a hack you can also try if you want, which is, oh, look at that, I'm making all kinds of racket. I'm going to go ahead and deflate the tire. So I took the cap off of the valve, and right now I'm taking some air out of the tire. Again, if you want to remove the wheel, feel free to do it. But we need to access this little bracket right here, okay? And the very first thing we're gonna do before we attach anything else on this fender that's completely loose is we're going to stick that screw through the slot and attach it. Oh, the brakes are getting in the way again. By the way, I'll show you this simple hack too for, um, for loosening your brakes really easily. Okay, so now I've got it started just a little bit there just with my thumb and forefinger here. And then what I can do is with this deflated tire, I can squeeze the Phillips head screwdriver in there. And get it tightened down. Oh yeah. This is the harder part of the operation, um, especially if I want to do what I do and skip a step taking the wheel out. Again, taking the wheel out, not that hard, but you can just deflate the tire and uh, Get the screw in like that, done. Okay, cool. All right, cool. So now that we've got the bottom screw in there, there, we're going to go ahead and attach here with the fender tab. Go ahead and slide the bolt and a washer onto the tab and then slide the thicker washer through. And then we go through the frame like I said, 
uh, the order of washers isn't that isn't that important. Um, you know, there's a reason for washers, but it's not that big a deal if you get it get them in the wrong order. But we'll see what the right order is. Okay, and then I can tighten this with my socket. It's gonna be a 10 millimeter and the Phillips. All right, great. And the last thing will be the struts, okay? So now, and don't forget you're gonna need to reinflate your tire. I didn't bring a pump with me, but. So I'm gonna grab uh, two more of these bolts here. And your around the block has a rear rack on it. So we're gonna use that. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna use the same eyelet here for the rear rack and for the fender. Now it's my preference to put the rear rack towards the inside of the bike, towards the center of the bike, and then the strut on the outside here. And then you feed the bolt through and then simply screw it back into the frame. There you go. Again, being gentle, not too hard. And then we'll just attach the rear one to the rear eyelet over here. being gentle. And then we'll just repeat the same process for it over here. I noticed on that strut, that was kind of cool. Uh, it was actually a little on the tight side for the bolt. So I just used my screwdriver and just gave it just a little tweak there to open it up. This one's gonna need it too, actually. Oh, just a little stick in there and there we go. Attach that guy. There you go, so you just saw me do the whole process uh, basically in real time. I don't know how long the video is, maybe 20 minutes. Um, you know, it may take you up to an hour if it's uh, you know your first time. I assembled something I hadn't assembled uh, a couple days ago and said that I should be able to do it in 20 minutes. It actually took me 35 minutes, no big deal. So anyway, there we go, we got the fenders on to the around the block. Uh, I know that you can do it too. If you run into any problems, just give us a call, all right, we'll walk you through it if this video isn't helpful enough. Um, okay, cool, thank you so much for watching and Gotta believe in yourself.